Okay, today I will show the steps of the examination of the respiratory system. Really, the respiratory system can be examined anteriorly and posteriorly. Prior to that, uh, as always in medicine, we have to take a permission from the patient and to introduce yourself for him and to provide him with the full privacy. I'll take a permission from the patient. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, before that really, before the examination of the chest, one should take a look at the anatomical landmarks of the chest. These are very important because all the clinical data, all the clinical findings are related to these points. And even your presentation will depend upon some of these points. I'll show you some of these points and you have to keep in your mind that we have seven points and we have seven lines. I'll show you first of all the lines. Really of the mid-sternum, this is mid-sternal line. This is one. At the mid of the clavicle, mid-clavicular line. Anterior in the axilla, this is anterior axillary line. In the mid, this is medial axillary line. And this is the posterior axillary line. From the back, we can see that we have two additional imaginary line. First one is the scapular line here. And the last one is the vertebral line here. So we have seven line vertebral scapular posterior mid anterior axillary mid-clavicular and mid-sternal these are the seven lines let's talk about the seven anatomical landmarks point first of all we have to know that about 5 cm from the suprasternal notch we have a prominence here which is really a joint between maniobrium sterni and body of the sternum which correspond to the second rib bilaterally we can count really the rib from above or the ribs below and we can show our clinical data with the use of this angle other important landmark point is the apices of the lung as we see here this is the clavicle this is the this is above the inner third of the clavicle just 2 to 4 cm above the inner third of the clavicle the uh, the apex of the lung is located this is the left apex and here is the right apex after that the third point important anatomical landmark point is where the lower border of the lung is located really if we count from here second intercostal space third fourth fifth and this is the sixth really in the sixth rib here is the lower border of the lung the lower border of the lung in the axilla is located at the eighth rib while posteriorly while posteriorly the lower border of the rib is located at T10 how can for the candidate or for the examiner calculate the vertebra and how can we know that this is or here is the T10 we can really slightly flex the neck of the patient the prominence this is the prominence the prominence here is C7 spinous process here is the C7 any another spinous process below which sometimes apparent is T1 so this is T1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and this is 10 so this is the lower border of the line these lines are very important the lower border and the apex because percussion or ascultation should not exceed this line another possible landmark from the back is the 12th rib really the lower most part in the back this is the lower most part the bone prominence here is the 12th rib one can count here two above and we can show our clinical data according to this rib 
After that, really, we can also count according to the inferior angle of the scapula. Really, this is the inferior angle of the scapula. Inferior angle of the scapula is located at the rib number 7 or intercostal space number 7. We can also count from there. The last anatomical point is the T4 here on the sternal angle anteriorly. These correspond to the bifurcation of the trachea. Okay, this is the last seven points. And we had also described the lines. So these are the seven anatomical landmarks, lines, and seven anatomical landmark points. Really, I start with the, uh, I'll start with the examination of the anterior chest. I'll show you the way how to examine the chest anterior you have to inspect for. First of all, you have to stand at the end of the bed and to look directly at the patient, keeping in your mind the symmetry of the chest, the shape of the chest, expansion of the chest, pattern of movement, whether the patient is dyspneic or not, and any heard sounds and lastly to stand beside the patient and to repeat these issues with yourself and to count the respiratory rate. Really during the examination of the respiratory rate just make the patient think that you are going to check the radial pulse while you are in reality check for the for the respiratory rate, the breathing cycle. This will withdraw the attention of the patient and make him more relaxed. Okay, we can count the respiratory rate. Last point in the inspection is to check the texture of the chest. Well, from the start, the chest of the patient should be symmetrical. That's to say, each half from the chest is similar to contralateral half. Shape of the chest should be bilaterally, symmetrical, elliptical, in a cross section. The transverse diameter more than the anterior posterior diameter, and there must be no bending either laterally or anteriorly. No bending. This is the normal shape. Abnormal shape may take the form of funnel chest, pigeon chest, barrel chest, and a variety of other abnormality in the form of scoliosis, kyphosis or kyphoscoliosis. Really, let's take a look at the pattern of breathing. Normally, in the male, the abdomen or the pattern of breathing is mainly abdominal. It is abdominal thoracic, but it's mainly abdominal. One can take a look at the abdomen and see that the abdomen is smoothly expanding with each inspiration and fall, descend with each expiration, this is normal, okay? This is the normal. While in female, no, the reverse, mostly, in most female, the reverse is true, that's to say they rely on their chest or thoracic muscles more for the expiration, for the inspiration, for the respiration in general. Other abnormality in the pattern of breathing in, in, in anxiety, for example, we may see a fast, deep breathing. In patients who had acidosis, we may see that there is uh, rapid and sighing breathing, what we call the cosmal breathing, and we have to know the causes of that. Chinese toxic breathing is another abnormality in the pattern of a breathing, in which there is alternating period between apnea and hyperapnea. And one should also uh, take a look or listen for the expiratory phase of respiration because patients who had COPD or those who had asthma may have a prolongation in the expiratory in their expiratory phase. Lastly, when the patient is in supine position, one should take a look at the abdomen again. If the abdomen instead of being rise with each inspiration, being sunk with each inspiration, sunken with each inspiration. This is what we call it abdominal paradox or Hoover sign, which is the result 
of diaphragmatic fatigue or diaphragmatic paralysis in which the diaphragm will be pulled intrathoracically because of the extra or uh, accessory muscle usage from the patient side with the resultant that each inspiration is accompanied by descent of the abdomen instead of rising this is what we call it abdominal paradox after that we should take a look for the patient if he is dysnic or not how oh, I can know that the patient is dysnic I look at the alinezai the alinezai is dilated in case of dysnea I look at the platysma of the sternocleidomastoid of the costal muscle these are the accessory muscle of respiration if they are if the patient use them the shoulder will raise with each inspiration and the patient in reality is in sitting position these are the inspiratory evidences from the patient really with the inspiration also we will see that the cricoid cartridge is descended more than usual and this is what we call tracheal tag and, and I'll talk about it just a few moments later um, this is this all these issues are the inspiratory evidences what are the expiratory evidences expiratory evidences also I look I'll take a look at the mouth of the patient pa patient who had uh, severely who is severely the snake may breathe with what we call it the personal breathing that's to say he is closing his mouth and and exhale breathing just from small opening from his mouth this is really helpful for him and uh, making the intrathoracic pressure is positive and in helping the accessory muscle of respiration this is one of the expiratory evidence other expiratory evidence that the patient is in sitting position in a standing position or even he may grasping the end of the bed this this really this posture is used to stabilize the shoulder gelder and to help him in respiration and this posture is called tripod posture these are the inspiratory and expiratory evidences of this near after that we I, we shall look at the texture of the chest whether there, whether there is any abnormality in the form of for example gynecomastia if the patient had dilated uh, superficial veins in case of severe vena cava if he had any scar or he had any incision in his uh, chest and uh, really we shall we, sh we should listen again for any added or any uh, sounds obtained from the patient this sound may take the form of wheeze may take the form of strider or the patient is patient's voice is hoarse patient voice is hoarse this is really obtained from the start of the examination when you meet the patient and ask him to for example take off his uh, clothes the patient when he told he may appear that he had a harsh or uh, uh, rasping and quality his speech or the patient even had an aphonia and this is due to lar laryngeal or extra laryngeal diseases so try that is due to obstruction really in the upper airway in the trachea or in the larynx and we is due to neurot bronchi whether by secretion whether by spasm whether by foreign body or uh, so on all these issues really are about the inspection of the chest